Can a man be sure he will be saved? And if so, how sure can he be that he will be saved? And are you sure that you are saved? The examination is simple. All you have to do is search the scriptures and see what they say and then examine self and see had you complied with what the scriptures say. The record tells us in 2 Peter 1 and verse 10 and 11 that we ought to make our calling and election sure. And 1 John 5 and verse 13, these things have I right unto you that you might know that you have eternal life. Not you might guess. Yes. So we can know tonight whether or not we are saved. Yes. So many people today yes. think that they can place membership in any religious body upon yes. this earth yes, and claim that all of those religious bodies are various ways of getting to heaven. Yes. I maintain tonight that if you're going to be a member of any church, yes, then you must be a member of the Church of Christ. And I'm going to prove that to you tonight. I know those religious persuasions have so many people are confused when it comes to matters of religion. And since denominationalism is on the rise in a rapid way, they confuse people as to where they need to place their membership. I realize and I recognize that one have to identify with the local congregation of God's people. Yes. And I maintain tonight that you've got to be a member yes. of the Church of Christ yes. in order to get to heaven. Yes. Now, here Jesus says in Matthew 28, yes. verses 18 through 20, yes. he says, All authority yes. has been given unto me, both in heaven and upon the earth. Yes. Go ye therefore and make all disciples. How do you do it? You do it by baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Make disciples of all of the nations. How do you do it? And that word nation there is the word ethnos, and you can hear our English word ethnic in there, and God is telling us you make disciples of every ethnic group, yes. black and white and red and brown. Right. They got to be all in this one church. Yes. Now I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 1. And let me give you some evidence as to why I believe the Bible says that you must be a member of the church of Christ in order to go to heaven. Now, notice something here. In uh, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 20, here is some evidence which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principalities are rule and power and might, yes. and gave him a name which is above every name, yes. which is above every name, not only in this world, but in the world to come. And I put all things under Christ's feet, gave Christ to be head over all things to the church, which is Christ's body, yes. the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Yes. And you had the quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Where in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, yes, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversations in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we are dead in sins, that quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show forth the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us, what? Through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that you be in the time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh made by hand. That at that time, Paul said, Ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope 
And without God in the world, what a tragic condition. But now in Christ Jesus, he who sometimes will fall off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in this flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for the making of sin, of, uh, for the making himself a twain, one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile. Wait a minute. And that he might reconcile. Reconcile who? That's both Jew and both Gentile. That's black and white and red and brown. Right. That he might reconcile. Wait a minute. This word reconcile is a compound word. R-E means again. And concile or conciliate means to make friends. That he might make friends again. That he might reconcile both. Neighbor, that's both Jew and Gentile. Under God. In the one body by the cross, having slain the enemy their body, and came and preached peace to them that was a fall and to them that are not. Now listen, for we both have access by one spirit. I'll get there in a minute on that spirit. By one spirit to the Father. Here it is. In this particular context, the Ephesian church was a predominant Gentile church. And here the Apostle Paul let them know at one time, in time past, they was walking according to the cause of this word. Yeah, that's right. And now they're in Christ Jesus. Yeah. That's both Jew and both Gentile. Yeah. That they might be reconciled both under God in one body. Yeah. Well, if you back up to Ephesians chapter 1 right. and verse 22 and forward, you'll see what that body is. Yeah, that's and I put all things under Christ's feet, yeah. gave Christ to be head of all things. To the church, which is Christ's body. So there's not going to be a church in Jerusalem for the Jews and a church in the Jerusalem for Gentiles. There's going to be one church, just like it is right now. Now let's see if it's that same church. While well, I pick up my reading in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 begin. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, but I therefore the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery. And I wrote it for a few words. Whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be filled with hell and of the same church. Not a church in Jerusalem for the Jews and a church in the Jerusalem for the Gentiles of the same church yes, and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Yes, yes. Whereof I was heard, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Yes, yes. Unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Christ Jesus to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him wherefore I desire that you faint not in my tribulation for you, which is your glory. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened in my by spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to cover him with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and the know the love of Christ which passes all knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask to think according to the power that working in us unto him be glory. Where? In the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, where without end. Now therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you are worthy of the vocation where with you are called, with all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. There is one church. There is one church. Now let's see what that church is. There is one church. I believe we can pick up that church Back there in prophecy. In Isaiah chapter 2. 
verses 2 beginning. It shall come to pass in the last days. The mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains. Shall be exalted above the hills. And all nations, black and white and red and brown, all nations going to have to flow unto it. In Michael chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, all people shall flow on to it. Daniel 2 and verse 44, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and it shall not be left unto other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all of these other kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. In Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 16, I therefore thus said the Lord God, I am returning, returning to Jerusalem with mercy, and my house shall be built in uh, it. In Psalm 127 and verse number 1, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, it. In Matthew 16 and verse 18, Jesus said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 forward, husband, love your wife, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it unto himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, but it should be holy without blemish. No wonder when Jesus Christ says, upon this rock, I, and when he said, I, that got rid of the three, and when he said, it, that got rid of them. Got rid of them. There's only one church. That's all it is. And Ephesians 4 and verse 4, it says there is one body. All right, now let's pick up the reading over here, and let's see something about that spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I want you to listen to more evidence here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians. And verse number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And verse number 13. What does the book say? For by one. For by one spirit. Listen. That's the teachings of this book. For by one spirit. That's the teaching of this book. There's not no holy hunch of God that gets here. Yeah. For by one teaching, uh -huh. are we all baptized where? Well? Into one church. Right. For by one teaching, yes, sir. in order to have all of these different religious persuasions, neighbor, you got to have a multiplicity of teachings. Yes, sir. For by one teaching, are we all baptized into one church? All right, let's drop down to verse number 20. Yes, sir. For there are Many members, yet but one church. All right, now let's drop down to verse 27. Now ye are the church of Christ and members in particular. Yes, sir. That's all right. You can't get no more than one out of this book. Yes, sir. In Daniel 7 and verse 14, Daniel say, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven came with the angels of day, and they brought him there before him, and that was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom, which all people, all nations, and all languages shall serve him, black and white and red and brown, every race, class, tribe, or tongue, got to be in this one church. Got to be in this one church. I'm telling you what the book teach, neighbor. It has to be in this one church. Black and white and red and brown. Yes, sir. One church for all nations. Yes. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away. And his kingdom, that which shall never be destroyed. Daniel 7, 13 and 14. Yes, sir. And Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4 says there is one church. Yes. That's what it says. Right. And notice what else Ephesians 4 and verse 4 says. Now there is one church. There is one spirit. We've already cleared that up. With 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse number 13. Even as you are called, listen, in one hope of your calling. This hope is not new hope. This hope is not good hope. And this hope is not blind hope. That's what man has thought. This hope, according to Colossians.
Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 5. Listen to the book. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, where have ye heard before? In the word of the truth of the gospel, which is come unto you, as it is come unto me, and thus bring it through as it also does in you, since the day you heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. Verse number 6. We got some folk around here hoping to stay on this renovated earth. Our hope is one day to be in heaven with God. That's my hope, neighbor. That's the hope we are saved by. According to John, according to Romans 8 and verse number 24. There is one hope. Not three or four hopes, but one hope. That's what the book teaches. If it's called in one hope, what you call it? Listen to it. There is one Lord. This Lord is not Marshall Applewhite. All right. This Lord is not David Koresh. This Lord is not Jim Jones. This Lord is not Louis Farrakhan. This Lord is not T.D. Jakes or any other of those latter-day revelators. This Lord is King Jesus the Christ. He said, all authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and upon the earth. Christ has all authority. No man has the authority to start a religion. He can't do it, neighbor. It's not a man alive can do it because it takes qualification to start one. First of all, that man got to live a perfectly sinless life. Let me tell you what it takes to start a church. He got to live a perfectly sinless life. And after he walked upon this earth and took the same treatment that King Jesus the Christ did, then the next thing you got to do, let somebody nail you to a cross. I'm telling you what it takes to start a church, neighbor. Somebody got to nail you to a cross. And then somebody got to, somebody got to spear you inside to make sure you're dead, neighbor. And then, neighbor, you got to be taken down off that cross. And you got to go down into the bed of the earth for three days. And neighbor, you got to get up a certain time. Can't get up on Monday. Can't get up on Tuesday. Can't get up on Wednesday. Can't get up on Thursday. Can't get up on Friday. Can't get up on Saturday. You can't even get up on a Sunday evening. You got to get up on that Sunday morning. And when you get up, neighbor, you can start your church. You can start your church then, neighbor. There's not a man alive that can start a religion. He don't qualify. He don't qualify. Tell Jake's or any of them, they don't qualify. There is no salvation in that stuff, friends. Those religions are false to the core. That's what it takes to start a church. You got to live a sinless life. And nobody did that but King Jesus the Christ. That's why he says upon this rock, this bedrock truth, the confession that Peter made that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. And now you know what you have. You have people now that has obeyed that truth who now, when you obey that connected key, you now believe that King Jesus the Christ is indeed the son of the living God. Anybody in a denomination, they don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. They don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. It's amazing to me. You got all of these religious bodies out here. I'd like to know who they belong to. I want to know that. Who do they belong to? You ever notice those names always tell you something about them, but it never tell you who they belong to? Never tell you who they belong to. The Catholic. That word just simply means universal. But I believe that because the church is big enough for everybody. I'm talking about the Catholic and all of our denominational dogs. Yes, <laughs> but that word Catholic does not tell you who the Catholic Church belonged to. Presbyterian. Uh -huh. They believe in a methodical organizational structure. Oh, but the Church of our Lord believe that. You've got to be developed and organized with preachers, elders, and deacons. Yes. But the word Presbyterian does not tell me who the Presbyterian church belonged to. All right. All right. Doesn't tell me that. Methodist, you name one and I can show it to you. Methodist, oh, they have a methodical way of doing something. All right. But that word Methodist does not tell me who the Methodist church belonged to. And I want to know that before I leave here. Yes, sir. 
before I leave here tonight, somebody pointed out to me who do these denominations belong to. Yes, sir. Pentecost. Give me Acts chapter 2. Yes, sir. Pentecost. Let me show you something, friend. You have folk around here talking about I'm Pentecostal, and I got a Pentecostal religion. In Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1, and when what? And when the day, not a religion, not a church, Pentecost is a day neighbor and not a church, nor is a religion. Pentecost is a day. And when the day of Pentecost will fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house. And it filled all the house. What they was dancing. What they was shaking. What they was crying. What they was coming down. Just let, just come down the aisle and let tears stream down your face. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer after me, and you're gonna be saved. Neighbor, that's a lie. That don't mean no harm, but that's a lie. You don't find not one Bible example where somebody was being saved after Pentecost by prayer. No, sir. Nowhere in this book. Prayer is a spiritual blessing. And it's there for God's faithful children. The sinner got to get up and obey the gospel of King Jesus Christ if he want to be saved, neighbor. There is one Lord. Now listen to it. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5, there is one faith. That's what your Bible says. That's what it says. Look at all these different faiths out here. Yes. Who are we going to believe tonight? Mm. Are we going to believe the Bible or are we going to believe some man? All right. Ephesians 4 and verse 5 say there is one faith. Yes, sir. That's what it says. That's right. It didn't say two faiths, no, just one faith. Neighbor, there's one baptism. Yes, sir. And you know the man that wrote that? Here's a man that wrote that there is one operative baptism. Yes, I know baptism is mentioned several times in the Bible. Yes, sir. It certainly is. But I'm telling you something. There is only one operative baptism that's all right. in this dispensation, and that's going down in that water. Yes, sir. And this baptism, according to Romans chapter 6 and verse number 3 and 4, is a barrier. What well, shall we say then? Shall we go on sending that grace mail back? God forbid. God forbid a man not be so. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? No, you're not that so many of us as were baptized in the King Jesus of Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried, not sprinkled, not pouring. You know, it's interesting to me. Water is the element. You can sprinkle water, but you can't sprinkle a man. You know why? Because you have to take that man's body and distribute him into small drops of water. Yes. It's amazing to me how ignorant some people is yes, in religion. Sir. And they want, you to, they want you to swallow that teaching down hook, line, and sinker. You cannot sprinkle a man. And if you think you can pour water on somebody, you can't do that to a human being because you got to turn them out into a small stream. That's what the terms mean. And yet people take these terms and then they try to put their own meaning on them and then they go out there and set up something and they draw disciples under them and people think it's always been that way, but they refuse to look into the Bible. We need to look into the book and see what the book says, neighbor. Baptism is a burial. Therefore, we are buried. You ever, you ever walk across a cemetery and ever saw a toe sticking up? <laughs> Have you? You know why you haven't? Because everybody out there is what? Buried. <laughs> baptism is a burial. Therefore, we are buried with Christ by baptism. There is one body and there is one spirit. Even as you call it, one hope you call it. There is one Lord, there is one faith, and there is one baptism.